I am a very happy camper after watching the last two episodes of Dynasty on. Now last week I didn't even have the time or energy to do the review and you know how packed Saturdays are so there's no way I could have done it a day later. And once you're a day later there's no real point of doing it until there's a new episode because no one's going to really be searching up the videos. So I decided to wait and honestly sometimes I feel like I get lucky more often than not because I usually don't miss reviews right. I'm pretty consistent with never missing an episode review, but every time it happens I almost always come out saying I'm kind of glad I did miss it because watching, in this case, episodes 6 and 7 back to back, I mean, for the most part, last week's episode I would have been perfectly content with, but that cliffhanger with Grid Knight, and then to just transition into it with this episode, was so smooth, so fun, and it had me feeling so damn excited. I mean, I said it, I mean, a lot of people when they were first starting up Dying as Zeon, they were saying, hey, I never saw Gridman, can I watch this without it? And you absolutely could. It's kind of like Power Rangers and things like that. Like, they're their own stories, but there's connections and there might be references, but... For those of us who saw Gridman, seeing Auntie in second with that glow up, seeing Grid Knight pop up, was so badass and there's a lot of character stuff I want to talk about there's a lot of like really good emotional punches but I got a fanboy for a minute auntie loved the character in Gridman loved where auntie's character arc went along with second this monster girl and to see them now you know continuing like when kaiju approaches a world it's going to cause nothing but destruction so Grid Knight is there to save the day and it's so interesting watching Grid Knight fight in comparison to obviously their kind of mecha-like form where it's very cool because they got so many different versions. They look like a dinosaur at times. Sometimes they look like a giant robot, right? But it's so fun to see Grid Knight who feels like a giant human jumping around who's just an absolute badass. Circular saws kind of doing quick teleports around. It's so fun. It's so smooth. And it just immediately reminded me why I loved the end game of Gridman so much. And to just see how, at first, because Grid Knight just assumed both of these were kaiju, hence why he absolutely slapped their asses and kind of got out of there afterwards. But to see the difference in how, like, obviously Sekken was trying to work alongside Gama and them, but Gama, just for obvious reasons, just kind of looks at them as probably being nothing worse than, you know, actually just being the people summoning the kaiju so they don't take their help. But by the end of the episode, when you see them team up, and the fact that they actually heal them, even though it was seemingly her last dosage of that kind of laser magic wand twirling that she was doing, which was so Sailor Moon-esque, and I absolutely loved it. It was so fun to see the team up, and then rather than just going, okay, now Second and Knight are going to now be a part of the crew, they're probably going to pop up every single fight, given the fact that this world's kind of going to shit, and Grid Knight's objective is to keep the peace. But it was just so fun and it was so smoothly animated. I mean, I already loved the kaiju that they summoned last week. It was so, it was a mixture of a dog mixed with an octopus with lasers coming out of every which corner. And it was completely destructive. I mean, there was so much carnage, there was so much chaos. And, you know, the fight on the water, when you're just kind of saying there, it felt like they had, uh, they were going to get their asses slapped. I really felt that way. So just like the escalation of the battle with the metal wrist and just, you know, they started off last week's battle with, like, this electronic bop, which was really good. But by the end of last week's episode, it was just heavy metal riffs and drum beats, and they just carry on with that in this episode when it kicks off. And it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, for those of us the fans of Gridman, absolutely are going to be jumping for joy over these past couple of episodes. And for those who are brand new to Dynazeon, you probably just discovered one of your new favorite characters, from character design to just, you know, personality traits alone absolutely love it. Now, like I said, there's a lot of good personal things over these past couple episodes as well, and I think the thing I come out appreciating the most might actually be Kyomi, because he was the one character I was convinced would probably be swept under the rug the most, because even though they were building up that whole, oh, he might be in love with his old high school sweetheart who was kind of toxic in the past, who just so happens to seemingly be the boss of Yamogi, but she's married or divorced or something, Nope, still fully married, and hey, here's my husband, let's have a dinner date together. A lot of a real emotional kind of signals being thrown at him, which he doesn't understand what to do. And I love how there comes a point where, after he's pretty much just destroyed, he's down in the dumps, he's like, okay, I thought you were actually flirting on me, even though you were a married woman. I actually felt like she was divorced, I didn't think they were gonna go, she was still married. 
So it's like, oh, is she trying to cheat on him? Or is it something that maybe we just read the room wrong and she was simply just saying, yeah, maybe I'm unhappy in certain ways, but that's marriage for you. This is the direction we're going. Instead, they actually went the direction of, like, she probably was very confused, but after he nearly gets killed and Kyomi saves him, they actually kind of had that near-death experience which actually brought them closer. And while maybe some people would have said, oh, we want to see, you know, the emotional shy boy end up with the pretty girl, it doesn't feel like that was for him, right? You know, from the past, that was someone who clearly was trying to get him to do things he didn't want to do, and it was just a pretty girl talking to him in his day and age where he doesn't have a job, his room's a mess, it doesn't feel like he's going anywhere. It feels to me like he needs to progress into a healthier direction, and it's nice in return he actually got to save a marriage from falling apart. I like how literally every character has a story happening in this, whether it's Chise with most likely her own bullying angle, the fact that she in episode 5 was covering up her wrists most likely meant that she was cutting herself, right? You have the whole sister angle with Yume as well as Yamogi, and I love that because that's still so fascinating with the whole idea, did she kill herself because she was bullied? Was it an accident? Was it on purpose? You're watching a video of a so-called prank, but it gave me the impression that she had to smile for the camera, not that she actually wanted to. So you have this kind of pushing back where a girl is saying, you know nothing about her, this is my problem, because she herself has trouble opening up, as he's in love with a girl who clearly has no interest in him, or so he thinks. So you have that love brewing there, with also a suicide bullying angle. That's an interesting story. You have the cousins, which is an interesting story. You have Gama, who has this 5,000 year mission, which is just like that classic Gridman story, as you also have this episodic style storytelling happening, and... Gama's story obviously links up to his old comrades who feel as normal as can be yet somehow want to destroy the world but what? why would they want to do that when they literally have no problem interacting with this group on a day to day basis? So you have Gama's interesting story, bullying interesting story, you know love that can't be, potential self harm as you have episodic kaiju fighting. This show's incredible. While on surface when you look at it at a distance it may not be as explosive as something like Gridman where it had something like constant thigh shots, constant explosions, or kind of maybe more pop-out personalities at a face value, but all of their personalities and stories, when you really watch these episodes, are so intriguing. And by reintroducing Grin Knight to the equation, having him be even more of a way to spice up the combat formula and maybe even the narrative, I mean, I've said it before in these reviews, and I said it a lot when you know I was talking about the last episode of Gridman, the ending of Gridman I thought was so revolutionary for the anime medium. I'm curious to see if they're going to try to build up to something equally as impactful with something like Dinozeon. Production value, absolutely on point. I love the directing on the emotional side, like they'll have so many times it's just a wide shot with isolated space. It's empty, it's desolate, it just feels so empty and horrifying as characters are talking about how lonely they are to the explosive animation and having Grid Knight literally bouncing around and teleporting around just adds so much fuel and flavor to this already incredible pot of anime goodness. This was incredible. I feel like a kid on Saturday morning. I say it a lot, but even more so when I get a double dose of Dinozeon, it really does feel to me like when you wake up, you know, I used to love watching Yu-Gi-Oh! I used to love watching so many shows on Saturday morning as a kid, and when they would double dose me like, oh, I thought I was just getting one episode, they're gonna hit me back to back because this is a really important arc. That's the best feeling ever, and just because of everything that happened last Friday, I got to experience these two in a row. And I'm gonna just say, if you enjoy this show a lot, like myself, even if you watch the show weekly, maybe give the past two episodes a binge in a row because it does kind of hit different, I'm not gonna lie. Incredible, emotional, so many gears are turning in my head and it really feels like we're just getting started and I know they're gonna stick their landing. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below, your favorite moment, and how excited and surprised were you when Grid Knight appeared? Because I gotta say, it kinda caught me off guard, I'm not gonna lie. Let me know your feelings down below, like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.